Stanford University. Hello and welcome back to E145 Technology Entrepreneurship. Our guest speaker today is Fergus Hurley. He's an Irish mobile entrepreneur located in San Francisco and he is the founding CEO of Focal Labs which produced Clickster and Pickmounts and he's here to talk to us today about some of the lessons that he has learned as an entrepreneur and he recently um, celebrated an acquisition um, so I'm uh, very happy that you could join us today Amazing. and talk to us a bit about your experience. Delighted to be here. Honored. Great, yeah. great. So um, now that you've gone through kind of the, the whole cycle of, of the process of starting a company and then having it be acquired, what would you say is the most important lesson that you've learned in this process? I'd say the two big uh, things that weren't uh, taught me at, the, um, in, at MIT are at the Stanford program that I did, the Stanford Summer Institute for Entrepreneurship. Um, that weren't stressed enough were number one you need to be amazing at product and you need to have uh, the best product out there otherwise you're wasting your time and uh, and you know product in the mobile web space consists of sort of three different parts to uh, the team uh, one is design then the next part is development and the next part is distribution and those three parts without being amazing at those three parts you're not going to be able to execute on the opportunity and be able to capture the value of the opportunity. Mm. Yeah. So, so how would how would you say you become kind of top notch in in those three aspects? I mean, a lot of people around say design is important and want to hire good designers. Yeah. Um, but but how do you how do you go about that process? Yeah, I think I think that uh, one of the things that people think is that you have to start a company to start learning these things. Mm. But I think that uh, there's the two main ways that I've seen people get really good at these things without starting a company and then that helps them start their own company more effectively is one, uh, getting an internship. So working at a web company as a developer if you have a development skill set or as a marketer if you're a marketer or um, as a designer if you're a designer and then you'll be working alongside these people who are amazing at development and uh, distribution if you're the designer and you'll be able to learn from them and if you're the developer you'll learn from the uh, designer and then ask. And when you start your own company you can ask that designer who you're now friends with for introductions to their friends and they'll be able to help you find designers. Another way to find designers is dribble.com mm -hmm. and uh, that's an amazing site out there for where designers upload their work and um, and yeah that's the way uh, we've found designers in the past as well. Great, great. So so what about in, in your own case I know you were in the PhD program at MIT in electrical engineering and computer science yeah. and came out here to Silicon Valley and started your company right away. Yeah. So you didn't get a chance to get that work experience and meet designers first. Yeah. Is this something you would have done differently or yeah, what I, would you I, recommend? I, I think that if, if I were starting again from scratch I definitely would do internships throughout my program in the uh, specific sector that I'm uh, trying to get into. But the, the other way to, um, outside of internships, to learn about all this sort of stuff is just to do side projects. Mm. So just start projects with your friends mm. and um, with other people in your school and see who joins you. Mm. And then you get to test out all these people and find out if they're good. If there's no designers in your school, go to the design school that is nearby. There's design schools in every city in the world nearly. Mm. And uh, partner up with them and see if you can get some of them uh, to work with you and you only want to work with the people who are very excited about your field and your space mm. and so that's really where I think the um, they're the two things that I would do if I were starting out again um, I would do internships and I would uh, do lo lots more uh, side projects with uh, friends and make new friends through doing side projects and there's all these now uh, hackathon weekends and startup uh, weekends and um, and those things are fantastic for people to met network meet more people and um, and start building some products in a low um, a low sort of a pressure environment mm, right. where you actually get to test it out but it's not life or death if it doesn't work out right yeah. right yeah. and so you you mentioned um, distribution is the other element that's important so yeah. how do you how do you think about distribution and and what are some of the yeah, I, I, th I think distribution is a sort of the key in defining a uh, thing for a lot of products out there and uh, and so distribution comes in many different ways and I know you, you told me that in your course you have used this slide from Dave McClure where he talks about all these different ways to be able to get people into your funnel mm -hmm. and um, and so you know that's like search, uh, paid advertising, blog posts written about you, mainstream media talking about you on television and radio 
and um, and all that stuff combined mm-hmm. uh, leads to distribution. And there's no silver bullet in distribution. Mm-hmm. We all wish there was, but uh, but right. there isn't. And uh, but just getting out there and getting the word out there is you know the most important thing in the end. And that's how defi- that was, that's what defines whether you're successful or not, whether people know about you, especially mm-hmm. in the consumer internet space. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and so is this, a, is this an important enough aspect that you would want someone dedicated to this on the yeah. founding team in the same way that you would look for a designer? I, I think that uh, you, know, you, you need to have a, a designer and developer on your founding team, mm-hmm. but I think that the, the distribution part mm-hmm. is so uh, specific to each business that really there's experts out there on each one of these verticals that can get you distribution mm-hmm. and you need to, as one of the founders or as all of your founders need to focus on being able to understand all the distribution mechanisms that are out there and being able to select the right ones and the right people in each one of those uh, spaces that is the person that can run the best campaigns. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great, great. And so in terms of uh, the other important aspect, the developer, how in your own case, how did you find the developers for yes. your startup so, and how did you recruit yeah. them? So um, just like I said, actually, uh, through hackathons, um, oh, I found okay. uh, some of them and through uh, friends and contacts uh, from MIT and other places. And um, another way that I know that people have found uh, great developers is through uh, GitHub. Um, so developers who are uh, committing a lot of uh, code to the open source community in projects that are relevant to your space, mm. um, just reaching out to them. Mm. And another way, and how, I, how did you convince them to work on your startup as opposed to somebody that, else's? That, that's, I can't tell you the secret sauce, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that's easy. I can't be telling you that. But uh, no, no. In in the reality, it's 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 uh, you know a lot about personal relationships. Mm-hmm. Just you know convincing them that the idea is um, is revolutionary and that you are going to be able to achieve huge success together. And, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, that is right. definitely not an easy uh, part. Great, great. So one, one last question, if you, you know, think back on your experience, um, is, there, is there anything else that we didn't touch on that you would want to, you know, there's um, uh, perhaps 55,000 online students and 120 Stanford students who are, who are listening, and so they're wanting to do their own startups. What yeah. one piece of advice would you want to leave them with? Yeah, I think I think that the the one thing that I was told at MIT uh, that I remember out of all the things I was told in, mm-hmm. uh, in my time there, yeah. the one thing was by John Doerr, mm-hmm. uh, who is a very famous venture capitalist here in Silicon Valley, mm-hmm. and he came to visit MIT and he had a small group session with a few students, and mm-hmm. I was lucky enough to be there. And uh, the one thing he said was to maximize your learning early in your career, mm-hmm. and not focus on making money and um, you know being an entrepreneur and having to start, be a founder and all this sort of stuff, but just maximizing your learnings, mm-hmm. and everything else, all your rest of your success will follow if you maximize your learnings. That means learning in terms of knowledge about how to be a better developer, how to be a better designer, how to be a better <coughs> pardon, distributor, mm-hmm. and then uh, connections in terms of how to, um, you know, who are the people that matter in your space, mm-hmm. and really building solid relationships with them. Mm-hmm. Um, where they trust you and you trust them, and uh, building a great relationship there. Yeah. Great, great. Well, thanks so, so much. So maximize your learnings. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this is this has been really uh, valuable lessons, and uh, yeah, I'm looking really forward to coming back for the proper the class. Then. To yeah, thanks very much. Great. Wonderful. Thanks, Jeff. Yep. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.